And when I look back now, you know, me here today, 15, 20 pounds heavier, I'm like, oh, that was the mindset was the problem. Not my body, not my size. It was the mindset because even then, when I'm so much lighter, I was still not happy. So what makes me think that today, if I got to that weight, if I got to smaller, if I got to 10 pounds lighter, if I got to 20 pounds lighter, whatever the weight is, that I will be happy because that's not, that's not what it is. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Almost 30 started as a conversation about the transition from our 20s to our 30s. But then we realized life is full of transitions. So we expanded our mission. We are an intuition-led, wellness-focused lifestyle podcast that promises to deliver authentic conversations, diverse points of view, and insights rooted in optimism, growth, and intention. The Almost 30 Nation community is a group of purposeful dreamers who are smart, passionate, and always seeking the full potential in every aspect of their lives. At Almost 30, we're making magic together. We dream it, and then we do it. Thanks so much for tuning into the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Hello, welcome to Almost 30 Podcast. My name is Krista Williams. And I'm Lindsay Simsek. I'm so glad you're here. Hello, hello. Hello. How's everyone feeling today? I was realizing when I voice note people that I kind of make it sexy. I was like, I was voice noting Griffin. It was her birthday. And I was like, why am I like sounding sexy right now? You're like, Griff dog. I was, I I was tell like, you about. and I want you to know that <laughs> you're special <laughs> and you're a golden light, and you've meant so much to me since joining the. T- it was like, <laughs> it's like, dude, chill out. My mom sent me a voice note the other day. It was like her first voice note, and it just is. It was exactly how she, mm. our our childhood answering machine sounded, and it was hilarious. I was like, oh, mom, you can drop it now. Yeah, do you know honestly. what I mean? Hi, you've reached the Sim Six. We're not here to answer the call right now, so please leave a message. <laughs> oh God! Anyway, my mom, my mom had like, "Hi, you've reached Terry Williams for blank company, the best blank blank." Like she said, like the slogan and logo next yeah. to like her name. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm so glad you guys are here. It means so much to Lindsay and I to connect with you on a weekly basis, every Tuesday and Thursday. Today is a solo episode with me on my body journey. And, um, you know, the impetus for this was uh, me sharing about my weight gain when I was in New York City. So we were in New York City before everything went down in March. And when I was in New York City, I was really reflecting on the habits and mentality that I had around my body and the way that I was treating myself and sort of how that transpired for me to be like at a lower weight than I had ever been. And how I've sort of shifted out of that, healed my hormones, and now just like kind of living with living with the new body, living with the weight gain. And you guys wanted to hear more. So I wanted to share more about that, how I handle body image issues, uh, my past, some tips, resources that I had. So this is a really heartfelt one for me. And this is really near and dear to my heart. Yeah, I'm really, um, I'm excited to listen. I think, you know, no matter what your body journey has looked like, I think for you to share or people to share, even if you're out there listening and you share with a friend or in community somehow, I do think there is that healing um, that will inevitably happen. Yeah. And I know, you know, especially during this time, you know, COVID-19 time and quarantine, um, it can be really, you know, you can be really working with a different type of energy than normal, you know, Mm -hmm. since we're slowing down we can't go to workout classes like before. Your workouts are shifting. W- working out from home, your eating is shifting. There could be binge eating, anxious eating, you know, because there's so much stress, stress and change. Um, so it can be a really trying time. You know, I had to get ready yesterday for the first time since quarantine to shoot content, and was like, whoa, like this is like not the vibe right now. And it was like such a a mirror for me in like recognizing the journey not being not ending and always continuing but just trying to like get out of mm. that mental mindset earlier than you know I would have in the past. Yeah, definitely. I think I in 
in isolation, like, and the quiet, I swear, and I've said this about just in general this time where I feel like a different person all the time, but as it relates to my body, I do feel different on different days. And so it's not about like freaking out that I'm thinking differently every day. It's more about, okay, so what is the root of that thought? Is it because like I had like a really shitty breakfast with a lot of sugar and then all of a sudden I start to spin and I feel kind of out of control, you know, because I think our actions can really dictate how we feel about our body and not the reverse, at least for me. So if I do like eat a whole pizza, which I did the other night, Easter Sunday, and um, but I was like, oh, the action made me think like, oh no. Mm -hmm. Like there was just these thoughts of like, oh, what does this mean about me? So am I going to be like doing this like more often? Yep. Like, is my body going to react? Am I going to be bloated if tomorrow? Blo can I trust myself? Can I trust myself? And I was like, okay. One, I've done this before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two, like I know that my body metabolizes according to my thoughts around it. and Or at least I believe that. So it's been a very like nuanced dance with with those feelings. And I just... I feel for everyone during this time it's because it comes in different forms how we're how we're dealing with this whether it's food or exercise or just how we view our bodies but yeah and I don't know about you I'm curious like how people who we love view our bodies I don't know if that if like being mm -hmm. in a new relationship has actually helped me to appreciate my body more mm -hmm. whereas when I was in my early 20s it would actually make me feel more insecure about my body mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it was weird. Me and Justin were looking at pictures of New York. On, it was our seven-year anniversary. And he was like, damn, you were so skinny. But it's funny because I'm so untriggered by that. Like, mm -hmm. I just am so like, dude, I know. Like, I was just like, I know. Like, it's so crazy. And it's been kind of fun to like explore different bodies, you know? Yes. Like, oh, that was like a dope body to have. Like, it was whatever. And now to just be like, all right, there's more of everything. Like, mm -hmm. and working with that. And, you know, Justin is so kind and loving, but now I don't, after seven years, you know, it's not like an attachment that you have to how they're feeling. You know, if, totally. it's, if it's negative, it's a, if it's a negative stimulus, yes. But it's like, you know, my body's always been determined about how I feel about it mm. and by the story that I tell myself rather than like any outside influence. So people could say whatever they want about it and it would never really change how my mental state or story was. Sure. You know, I could even change what my body looked like and it would still never change the way I was mentally speaking about my body or to myself because it was like almost like body dysmorphia where I would look at myself and be like, and see all the bad things or see all the things that needed to be changed. And, you know, when I got down, down to like the the lightest I've ever weighed, it was like, okay, I'm five pounds away from, from the goal. I'm five pounds away from whatever. I'm 3% body fat away from whatever. And it's like, that was so profound for me because I realized that it wasn't about the number when I got there. It was like, oh, there's always more. And on the flip side, thinking about that with like money, there's always mm -hmm. more. You could always want more, you know? And that's that's the mentality and struggle with life. But, you know, in this conversation, I just, I answered some of your questions that you guys shared in the secret Facebook group so kindly. And then to my Instagram, when I asked about um, what you guys wanted me to talk about, and then I just go with what it's like, you know, what it was like for me to gain weight, what it was, what it felt like and what it's been like to just have, you know, a different body over time and how I really work with and dance with the body conversation that I have. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Before we get into this episode, we just wanted to update you on some almost 30 happenings that whoop you whoop. can be a part of. Coming up this Saturday, we are doing our new Paradigm Digital series. So pumped. And this one is with our dear friend, Natalia Benson. Uh, this is a modern mystic workshop, Purpose, Money, and Empowerment. So, you know, I, I don't know if you all know Natalia. She's been on the pod before, but she's just so powerful. And I love how she uses astrology and manifestation um, and has really helped uh, her community, our community, and us really align with our life's purpose. And that's what this workshop is really going to focus on. Yeah, she's incredible. And with this, you get free access to her astrology 
intro course, which is $120 value. You get her book, Spiritual or Mystical AF, on audio for free. So there's a bunch of free offerings within this workshop. You will also get the recorded workshop and following. And this is just one of a, of many workshops that we have in the new digital new paradigm digital series that we are so excited about. We're supporting you during this time. We're helping you up level during this time. And it is going to be amazing. So almost30podcast.com slash new paradigm is the link. And we will show all of our workshops with amazing people like Natalia, Nicole Lappin, Natalie Miles, Peter Kelly, Ryan Weiss, Alexandra Roxo. There is tons on there and we are so looking forward to it. Yeah, so it's Saturday, April 25th, 11 to 1.30 p.m. And again, yeah, almost30podcast.com slash new dash paradigm. Very excited about that. And then we also have Inner Peace. Inner Peace, baby. <laughs> Wanted to give you guys all the tools and resources that I feel like we've learned over the past couple of years, you know, speaking with experts and um, leaders and healers and teachers and all of these things, you know, we've tried everything. And with this, we've really found what works for us to bring us back to a feeling of peace. And this feeling of peace has been instrumental for me during this time. I just... I felt so called to share like all of all of the things that have helped me to really ride the wave of what is going on now and feel really good during it. Yeah, I didn't realize until much later in life in the last couple of years that and we talk about this just that peace is our birthright and that I was kind of defaulting to this anxious state because that's kind of like how I grew up and I'm sure a lot of you were born into just a little bit of stress. <laughs> and so it's it's really been a beautiful journey to reconnect with that feeling and that state of being. So you can go to almost30podcast.com, click on shop, or just go directly to shopalmost30.com. Peace is your birthright. Peace is your birthright. Peace and love. Okay. Enjoy this one. Thank you for your kind messages around this. Thank you for just being with me on this journey. And you know, I will note before we get started, if you do feel triggered by body conversations, by conversations about weight, about food, about dieting, about that kind of thing, you know, I would I would caveat that maybe this isn't the episode for you. Maybe if you you do feel triggered by this sort of conversation, that we have a bunch of other episodes that would be great for you to dig into, but this could be potentially triggering for people. So FYI, trigger warning. Just wanted to caveat that and then also let you know I'm not a doctor. You know, I've never claimed to be one. This is just my specific journey with my body from my honest perspective, and it is evolving. So I wanted to say that I'm grateful for you. I'm thankful for you, and we will see you on the flip. See ya. Enjoy this one. Hello, guys. Welcome to my solo episode. Krista is here with you and I'm so glad. I'm in I'm in a bit of a mood and I'm just really looking forward to talking to you. I've been feeling lately like I haven't wanted to talk or share. And I was thinking today, why is that? And I think one of the reasons is because I've been avoiding this episode. I've been avoiding this conversation. And oftentimes nothing comes through when I'm blocking the message that needs to be shared or what it is that I need to talk about. So this has been a long time coming. You guys have been asking about this one and I'm really excited and a little bit nervous to to dig in with you. This is something that is near and dear to my heart. It has been for quite some time and it's part of my programming and what makes me me and it's all about my body journey. So what was the impetus of this solo episode that I'm excited to dig in with you guys was a post that I did on my Instagram, It's Krista, that I shared about a few months ago when I was in New York City. And you know how your phone is like so kind to send you reminders of photos you took years before on this date or in this place. So here I am in New York City where I used to live with Justin for a few years before we moved to Los Angeles. And I'm being reminded by my sweet phone about these photos that I took when I lived in New York City. And as we do, we go to these photos and we look at how whack our clothes are and we laugh at ourselves. But we also can be critical about the way that we looked. 
And when I saw these photos, it wasn't a surprise to me to see the way that I looked, but it was just a reminder. And what I saw so clearly was the ways in which my body has changed over the past years. And that is weight gain. (laughs) And it's so funny because I posted all these pictures of me when I was living in New York and I was like a peanut. And as compared to my body now, and it was like seemingly such a radical idea to gain weight. Like it was like so many people were asking questions. And even I posted a question in the Secret Almost 30 podcast Facebook group asking them, you know, what what would you guys like to know about my body journey? How can I help you? What can I share? And it is so interesting to me. And I'm laughing because I'm completely you, but it's like, the concept of gaining weight and being like, this is fine is like such a like act of defiance. It's like almost comical to me. It's like, I didn't even realize by doing the post and being like, hey, what's up? I've actually gained like 15 to 20 pounds from these photos that it would be such a such a groundbreaking concept and idea to just be like, yeah, it's kind of what's up. And I realized when I did that, how... Now I'm in this place where I'm comfortable with it. And that doesn't mean I don't have my days, but I really just look at this evolution that I've gone through, you know, from the time I was very little as this integrated part of who I am. And, you know, this is is saying as someone that has had points in time in my life where I felt like, I will never be able to get rid of this story. I will never be able to walk into a room to go through my day without the worry, without the conversation, without thinking about what I'm going to eat, without counting my calories in my head, without thinking about how much work, how much I need to work out to negate how much I was eating, without always wanting to be smaller. And that was, you know, my programming. That was in my mind from when I was very young. And when I saw the photo comparison from me now to when I was in New York City, and this is what was so profound to me is I remember being in New York City and I was working out like crazy twice a day, maybe. I was eating super clean. I was like so about it. And I remember getting to a weight that was so low for me. and you know, my family, they weren't worried about me, but they were just kind of like, oh, this is like interesting. You know, this this body we've never seen, this size we've never seen, and I've never seen myself that small. But I remember getting to a weight that I'd never seen before and thinking like, okay, five pounds more. (laughs) Let's get smaller. And I told a friend one time, my dear friend, Adam, we we were out somewhere and I was like, yeah, he's like, you know, you've been working out so much. I'm like, yeah, I've got like, you know, I was like the Regina George. I'm like, three more pounds to lose. Three more pounds to lose. And he's like, you've been saying that since I met you. (laughs) He's like, you've literally been saying that since I met you. You're always on to the next, on to the lower, on to the different. And it was such a profound thing for me to have that mirror presented to me to say, you've always wanted less. You always wanted to be smaller than you were. And you were never satisfied. And I'll never forget that moment because it was true. And it was such truth. And when I got to this weight that I had never been at through unhealthy means of overexercising, diet pills, very strict eating, I was still not happy. And when I look back now, you know, me here today, 15, 20 pounds heavier, I'm like, oh, that was the mindset was the problem not my body, not my size. It was the mindset because even then, when I'm so much lighter, I was still not happy. So what makes me think that today, if I got to that weight, if I got to smaller, if I got to 10 pounds lighter, if I got to 20 pounds lighter, whatever the weight is, that I will be happy because that's not, that's not what it is. And just for background, you know, on, on my journey and, and where I came from as far as like my body relationship, which I'm hopeful, you know, maybe you guys can feel like you're not so alone or you can relate to, or this could be familiar familiar for you. Weight and body was like a huge, I'm trying to think of the right word. It wasn't like a, it, it was 
a huge priority for my family, which seems odd to say, but it was the feeling when I go to therapy and I work through it. It's that love will be taken from me if I was not to be a certain weight or if I was to be like a certain size, that I wouldn't be loved. I wouldn't be accepted. I wouldn't be seen. And I'll, you know, never forget when I was really little, me and my sister, I have an older sister. She's four years older than me. She was always tiny. She was like tiny, tiny. And I came in and I'm like, not tiny, tiny. And being compared, you know, when we're very little, like we're both eating breakfast, but I had a smaller amount or it was like a conversation like, okay, so what should we be doing for Krista? Cause it's not the same as Bren, you know, that kind of comparison. And when I was like heavier, when I was younger, because there was so much change and chaos and emotional turmoil that was happening within my family dynamic, that food was so comforting to me. And my dad is like such an eater. He's a, he's the best. He's such an eater and he loves treats. He loves treats. So that was like a comfort for us. It was a way to bond. It was a way to like escape and it was a way to, to stuff feelings. So that was like a habit that I picked up from a very young age. And then through high school, I mean, high school's like, you know, how invisible can I be? <laughs> like how many diets can I try? And I think, and I hope that the conversation has changed where people are less focused on dieting and being small, especially when we're in high school. But for you know my generation and me growing up then, it was like huge. Like it was literally to be invisible. And I had a girl one time make comments about me and my weight. I had a friend, one of my really good friends, you know, made comments to me in straight to my face. And he said, you know, you're fat and you would be better and you would feel better if you weren't fat. And the girl would say like, oh, you actually have like cellulite on the back of your legs (laughs) when I was wearing these like shorts to school, which were completely inappropriate. Like the shorts were like completely wrong. But I actually had never thought about my body in either of those ways. So it was kind of like, when you're so malleable during those ages within high school and you're so absorbing of the opinions and thoughts of other people, it was like, okay, I'm going to take this on and put this in my put this in my library to add to my story. And adding to my story of, I will only be loved if I am not overweight. Uh, my family prioritizes health over anything. And I am fat and I have this issue with my legs. And, you know, that among other things led me to, in high school, um, start to explore diet pills, start to explore dieting and exercising. And um, I was able to to lose weight, to get smaller, to do all those things, but it wasn't at, you know, there was a cost. I had a panic attack that took me to the hospital my junior year because I was borrowing someone's Adderall to lose weight. And it sort of snowballed from there. And I think you know, as things became even more hectic at my house, that became the thing that I was so focused on from that period on. It was like the constant conversation in my head at all times. And for me, it's never expressed itself as anorexia or as bulimia, but it's always been disordered and it's always been a mentality that I had and something that was just underlying energy that was always being taken from me. And I would always say, like, if I didn't have this story related to the importance of my weight and my body and how I was never good enough and I was never thin enough, I could probably cure cancer. And I've thought about that so much with women, like the amount of energy that we spend hating our bodies, wanting to be a different size, wanting to look different. I mean, the patriarchy wins because that is so much energy that we could spend following our dreams, loving other people, curing cancer, (laughs) running for president, all these things. It's just like such an energy suck, but it's such an important story that we need to like work on rewiring. So from high school, when I had explored diet pills and I explored uh, taking people's Adderall for the effect 
of the stimulant so that I wouldn't eat and, you know, had experimented there. When I went to college, it was um, a little bit more of the same. And I remember my freshman year, I had a really rough year. My parents had had separated at this point and they'd sold the house. My grandma, who I was close with, passed. I was in a re- weird living situation. I had been dumped by my high school boyfriend. I'd gotten arrested. It was like a really sexy, fun year. And I didn't know at this point, but I had hit such a rock bottom that I had stopped caring about anything. I slept all day. I cried all day. And I ended up losing tons of weight. And I'll never forget the day uh, I ended up losing tons of weight. And I remember saying to myself in my head, like, I actually don't care about my life enough to care if I lose or gain weight right now. I do not care about my existence enough to care either way if I lose or gain weight. And so I didn't step on a scale, didn't work out, didn't think about what I was eating and just kind of tried to get by surviving during this really, really challenging and transformational time for me. And you know, after a few months of, of this deep depression and just being in my bed all day, I got on the scale and I remember I was smaller than I'd ever been. And it was such a perplexing thought for me that when I let go of this expectation of what I need to eat, how much I need to weigh, how much I need to work out and um, really just let go and like let myself intuitively eat. Although I was so depressed, I was still letting myself intuitively eat how my body would respond and almost let go of a lot of the emotions and the pain that I had been holding on to. This probably was the first time in my life through this dark period within my first year of college that I had really let myself to fully express all the pain that I had felt in my life. And I remember listening to like the best breakup mixes. I would like just go to town. Like I just remember my, I was top bunk and I would just crush like all of these, the best breakup songs. It was like dashboard confessional, like just really going going for it and just really expressing and feeling through these emotions of shame, of inadequacy, of heartbreak, of um, depression, and not thinking about my body at all because I was so focused on the breakup. I was so focused on being arrested. I got arrested for um, uh, underage drinking, by the way. Got it expunged. Had to do. I had to do. I had to pick up trash on the side of the road. Anyways, that was humbling. And that's another story for, you know, another day. But I just remember I let myself feel so much during that time. And I let myself express so much sorrow and grief from the past years within my family and with what I was going through that because I wasn't focused on my body, that it kind of figured itself out. And it actually was a relief for me to have a different focus from my body, from my weight, from the pain of of that conversation within my mind. And after I got through that period, I ended up, I, I kind of was still just having those those conversations and those feelings throughout college, even though I was like a normal size, you know, I was way smaller than I was now, but really the goal with everything was always to be smaller. It was still, still kind of there. And then when I graduated um, college and I moved to Chicago, I moved um, there and I was working at my first time, my first time at a corporate job. And I remember not knowing how to eat, not knowing how to like be on my own and, and work within a corporate environment and eat. And, you know, my body weight fluctuated as it normally did. But at that time is when I found yoga and when I found meditation. And yoga became a practice that I went to every single day. It was hot yoga and it was in Chicago. So it was freezing cold. So it was such a relief for me. And it was so wonderful for me to like be hot and sweat in the city. And um, within finding meditation through, you know, what was challenging times for me at my corporate job, I um, was able to really start get a, getting a handle on my mindfulness practice and the mind-body connection. You know, yoga is such a beautiful practice of slowing down, of connection, of breath, of movement. And although it wasn't necessarily spiritual for me at the time, I was starting to understand. And I was starting to make the connection between my body being more than just this like thing that I hated, that I fought with, and that it was something that enabled me to deepen my spiritual practice. And that it was an integral part of this entire experience of the mind-body complex 
that I came here to feel. Just put in my order for Daily Harvest, y'all. If you have not gotten on the Daily Harvest train, I feel like now more than ever, we are looking for convenience and also healthy food. And it's important to eat right because we want to feed not only our physical body, but it really affects our mental game, our emotions, and our spirit. And Daily Harvest makes it really easy. They make delicious meals, um, whether it's a smoothie or a harvest bowl or a latte or an oat bowl. It's clean and it's right at your door. You order it and you get it right to your door. And it just takes a few minutes to prepare any of these. And what's so cool is that they freeze these fruits and vegetables at peak freshness. So when you cook it or blend it up, whatever it is, it's so fresh and enjoyable and delicious. I swear by this brand. And they never use preservatives, added sugar, or artificial ingredients. Some of my favorites are the Harvest Bowls. I just have to say they taste like a chef is cooking in my kitchen. The cauliflower pesto is my go-to. Sometimes I'll like cook a little salmon to add to it if I'm needing some animal protein, but I love it. And they're in the process of transitioning to 100% compostable, recyclable packaging and are over 50% of the way there already. So bravo to you, Daily Harvest. So if you'd like to try go to dailyharvest.com and enter the promo code almost 30 to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code almost 30 for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. I don't know about you, but I was getting to the point in my wellness journey where I was like, yeah, I'm eating all the right things, I think, and I'm working out, I'm getting enough sleep, but what's going on? Like, I feel just a little bit off, and I was just really tired of playing the guessing games, you know? And this brand believes that everyone should have the ability to improve their health. This is the first personalized subscription vitamin service that leverages a hair test. It's so easy, y'all. I just send in a little snippet of my hair, and it takes the guesswork out of what your body actually needs. Paragon Vitamins is a modern wellness approach backed by state-of-the-art technology designed to fuel, detoxify, and repair. I actually was on the phone with Dr. Sam Brock the other day from Paragon Vitamins. I wanted to learn even more so I could talk to you guys about this. I learned that my copper levels were too high and this could have been the cause of my skin issues, of my low moods. And so we are upping my zinc intake in my Paragon Vitamin Packs. And these packs are so awesome. I get basically four weeks worth at a time and there is a pack for three times during the day, AM, midday, and PM. It is all rationed out, so organized. You see on the recyclable packaging what is in the actual pack. I'm obsessed with this and I feel so much better. Krista and I have both talked about just our energy being better, like my mood is better. I'm just feeling so good. So I'd love for you to try. Ask us questions if you want. You can go to paragonvitamins.com and use the code ALMOST30. And this is going to get you 30% off Paragon Vitamins Nutritional Assessment and then four weeks of free vitamins only for $90. So you're going to get that nutritional assessment and four weeks of vitamins for just $90 using the code ALMOST30 when you go to Paragon, P-A-R-A-G-O-N, vitamins.com. And so outside of Chicago, I was drinking and, you know, I was also doing recreational drugs on the weekend. And that continued until I moved to New York City when I found Justin, my sweet fiance, Justin. And then basically starting in New York, I stopped drinking. And a lot of the reasons why I actually didn't like drinking, even when I was in high school and college, I never truly enjoyed it, was because of my fear of gaining weight by drinking too much. So I was always a person that was like, if I could choose between having a drink and having a dessert, (laughs) I would always choose food. Like I always was thinking in terms of calories at that point. So for me, drinking meant weight gain. And I didn't want that because I wanted to, you know, I wasn't able to quote unquote, control my eating enough. So I actually really hated drinking. It actually was like a fear response for me where I 
really got scared when I would drink a lot that I was going to gain weight. You know, the, the weight gain from drinking really terrified me. So I actually never enjoyed drinking for that reason. And also because it was a, a depressant, also because it didn't allow me to connect with people in the way that I truly felt like mattered. So there was a lot of reasons why, but when I moved from Chicago to New York, I knew that I wanted to to stop drinking. And I have, you know, done in other episodes, like our episode with Ruby Warrington called Sober Curious, a full introduction on my drinking story. But the way that I quit drinking was a huge part of like my journey because it allowed me to connect with my body more than I was able to connect with it previously. You know, drinking was one of those things where you would drink and then the next day you're laying in bed all day, you're sleeping, you just feel like such trash. And there's such an anxious feeling because you've just just disrespected your body so much. You've poisoned it so much that it's like, it feels like, well, why not feed it trash? Why not eat, you know, whatever the next morning or whatever that night? Like it doesn't matter because I've already been drinking. So that was another step in in my journey of finding meditation, finding yoga, and then eventually quitting drinking that was really helping me as much as I didn't, wasn't consciously aware of it to connect with and you know get in touch with my body more so than I was. And so I'm in New York City. I'm living with Justin at this time. We're living in a studio. Having him was, has always been such a gift for me, but I've never shared with him much about my body conversation or the body struggles that I've been with because I've always felt like if I express it, people will see things and people will then notice. So it's very interesting because, you know, whenever I talk about my relationship with my body or, you know, the journey that I've been on, it's it's interesting because I think Justin is often surprised because it's never been a part of my thought process to tell the person that I am naked with, that I sleep with, that I have sex with, that like sees me day in and day out from every angle, what makes me insecure? Because I think guys, and this is my perception, are so simple that it's like, they don't notice what we notice. They don't notice our flaws. They don't notice the things that we want to change. Like so many people don't notice what it is that you want to change about yourself. So I've always kind of kept that close to the vest because I don't want to be like, yeah, I hate that one I hate that dimple on the back of my right thigh. And then they're like, oh yeah, what are you talking about? And then you like see it and then they're like, huh. And I'm like afraid they're not going to unsee it. And then they're going to be like, oh my God, that fucking dimple drives me crazy, which isn't true. That's absolutely crazy. But I never, but what I'm saying is that when I lived with Justin, so Justin was the first boyfriend that I ever lived with. We dated for seven months long distance before we moved in. So although I think we had been intimate, yeah, we, we we had had sex by that point. But it wasn't like when I was going on the the journey of going in or really pushing myself to the limit when I was with him in New York, I wasn't sharing much about how I was feeling about my body or any insecurities that I had because it just didn't feel natural for me. And we had been so early on in our relationship that it didn't feel right for me to share about insecurities because it just has always felt like something that I want to figure out myself and that I want to make sure I'm sharing with someone for the right reasons. And I want to make sure that it's not to ask for them to comfort me or or whatever. So I was just in New York City. I fell in love with um, SoulCycle. You know, I had um, jobs in New York City. I was working in the corporate world. I was doing my thing. But I had fell in love with fitness. And this is really when class pass like started to pop off. With class pass, like was not a thing before I got there. And people weren't working out at classes like they were or are now or before quarantine. And so, you know, I started to go to classes all the time because there was just like this energy in New York where I was like, oh, I have to do to do. And when I fell in love with SoulCycle, I was like, oh, I need to fit into this mold of being a fitness instructor. Like if this is what I want to do, then I need to to really work to fit into this mold. And for people that you know are new to the podcast or haven't heard my story with Almost 30, I moved to New York City. I was working in the corporate world. I've worked in the corporate world for eight years before I quit with Almost 30. And I found SoulCycle, as you do, and I fell in love with it in the city and wanted to be an instructor. 
And so that journey to be an instructor and my desire to be an instructor was parallel to my desire to always change my body, to always be smaller, to really focus on my body as this thing that needed to be changed and fixed. So I started to work out a lot. I worked out seven days a week, probably a few times a day. We had a gym in our building as well. And I would go down there and do sprints, like drink tons of pre-workout and do sprints. And I just really, really was obsessed with it. I thought that the only way for me to be accepted, to be you know, looked at as someone that could be a fitness instructor, I had to look the part. And that meant you know, being super small and being super fit. And I ended up getting down, you know, to a smaller weight than I had been in a very long time. And, you know, I remember getting my body fat tested multiple times and like being at a body fat percentage that was super low, but always saying less. And I remember I got my body fat tested once and it was like 18%. And the guy was like, so what are you doing? Like, what's your goal? And I was like, I think I, you know, I was like, I want to be 15%. And the numbers are so like, the number to me, like for me to think about why I would want to be 15%, the reasoning is what, it, the reasoning why is because that was less than what I was then. And there was no logic behind it, but the fact of like, this percentage is never good enough. I need to be less. And that was the same with the numbers with my weight is this number is not good enough. It needs to be less. And it's the whole conversation where we're just going in circles where nothing is ever good enough. And no matter the weight, I am the problem. I am not doing enough. I am not there. I am still in process. I am not good enough. And, you know, for years, probably two to three years, probably two years, I worked out a lot, would probably, I think, yeah, I was taking diet pills at that time. I would take diet pills, work out a lot, take um, tons of pre workout, and just, you know, just kill myself. You know, I just would work out all the time. And, you know, my relationship with with diet pills is like, that to me was the edge that I needed. That to me was the stimulant that I needed. That to me was like the quick fix, which would make me feel like I was doing something good for myself. And diet pills are terrible. Diet pills is a huge part of why I ended up getting really sick when I moved to LA and got adrenal fatigue. I ended up putting on weight because I was so inflamed because my adrenals were so shot. You know, I couldn't get out of bed. Um, And, you know, that's what really happened is after we moved from New York City to Los Angeles when I was pursuing Soul Cycle and I didn't get it. And then in LA, I auditioned again and didn't get it. It was in perfect tandem to my body just almost shutting down. And I couldn't. Uh, therefore drink any stimulants. I couldn't drink coffee. I couldn't drink pre-workout. I was sleeping at weird times. I couldn't fall asleep. I had gained a good, a good considerable amount of weight where I felt incredibly uncomfortable in my body. My, I was had terrible mood swings and the adrenal fatigue had pretty much overtaken my body. And I just felt completely like I was living in a fat suit because the inflammation was like all over. And it felt so different for me from the body that was working out all the time and not being intuitive. And, you know, that really led me into the healing my hormones naturally, which I detail in a solo episode of Almost 30 podcast that you can listen to. It's it's called Healing My Hormones Naturally. And that was part of that journey that I went on together. And within the Healing My Hormones Naturally journey, it was so challenging and low for me because I didn't know what was going on And I didn't know why I was feeling this way and finding out that it was a hormonal issue and that I could heal it was huge. And I healed it through the amazing women at Your Hormone Balance, my dear friends. Uh, Candice Birch was incredibly helpful for that and I couldn't recommend them enough if you are looking for more information about your hormones. But having that point where I was asking my body to do these things and it was finally saying no and it was finally resisting and I put on this weight was like, okay, so this is something that I can't just keep pulling from. I can't just keep asking for more energy, asking to do more. Like It's finally going to say no and going to respond to me. And from that point, I had to pretty much change everything. You know, I, I couldn't do the 
intense workouts anymore, which made me feel so bad. It made me feel lazy and it made me feel um, scared. You know, I was so scared. I'm like, oh my gosh, if I'm not going to Barry's boot camp listening to Tiesto at 5 a.m., I'm going to gain weight. And, you know, I won't be liked and I won't be loved and I won't love myself. And, you know, I couldn't have the stimulants that I was having. I was, I was done at this point with diet pills. I will never, I mean, they're ridiculous. It's like so 80s, like honestly. And I will never, you know, have them again. But all the changes that I made through healing my hormones naturally, such as less intensity workouts, more walking, more sleep, more sugar balancing foods, more fat in my diet, um, more weightlifting, really changed my body. And it's been something that has been so interesting to see. You know, it's made me gain more muscle. It's made me change my shape. It has made me feel stronger. It's also made me feel more healthy. But it has been something where the weight gain has had to be the conversation within my head that I focus on accepting and loving. And, you know, when I shared with you guys about the life edit that I did, and which was in a solo episode, and basically the life edit was me going through all areas of my life and editing what needed to go and what needed to stay so that I can more clearly have intentions around all aspects of my life. One of the things that I edited was my the clothes in my closet. And I remember thinking to myself when I was getting rid of a lot of the clothes that no longer fit me, you know, a lot of these clothes did not fit me anymore. Like hilarious. And even having to buy clothes that are a bigger size, you know, a size that I've never, never thought I'd be. Honestly, never thought I'd be. I was always just, I would just sit there and tell myself, like, as if I was my friend. Like, what do I think that I'm going to be the same size as I was in high school forever? Because I think about like the women that I remember being, you know, as in my 20s and I would see the women that were 30 or, or whatever. I would just think like, oh, you know, they're a bigger size, but they're so beautiful and they look so healthy. And it's almost comical to me to think that within our lives, if I accept myself to change, evolve, and grow as a human, as a spiritual being, that I don't expect that from my physical self. So I expect that I'll change. I expect that I'll get better. I'll get smarter. I'll get kinder. I will get more connected. I will feel more spiritual. I'll feel more successful. But yet I'm going to sit there and, and hope that my body still looks like the body that it did when I was 14. Like, okay. Okay. Like that doesn't make sense. Part of the beautiful part of the journey of life is to like see how the body grows, like see how it changes, like see what it's like when your ass is bigger or you're like, you get more curves or you like just change, like your face gets more full, like whatever. It's like, that's part of like the beautiful part of the journey is seeing how else we can grow in addition to all these beautiful ways that we push ourselves in every day. And I think a lot of the ways in which I've learned to love my body have been done through my inner work and through only work that focuses on me. It's a very personal thing to me. And I think that truly, you know, at the basis of it, that really, really realistic mindset around what my body should look like right now. And when I think about before what my mindset was around what my body should look like is not realistic. It wasn't realistic from a weight point. It wasn't realistic from a lifestyle point. It wasn't realistic from a general life point. It's like, why would I look like X, Y, or Z or B, X, Y, or Z when that's not me and that's not what I'm doing and that's not pri my priority in life? So it wouldn't make sense for me to, for me to look that way. And you know, now when I'm really working on the reprogramming and um, the subconscious uncovering of so many of these things that have led me to use food as comfort and to never feel enough and to always feel other because I feel like 
that little girl, you know, that that chubby little girl still is me and that I'm always the the heavy one is something that I'm working on reprogramming now. But for one of the ways in which besides thinking realistically about our bodies is I think has really helped too is to um to find clothes and to buy clothes that fit you for the body you have now. And I think that's really simple and it seems vain and trite, but it's really true. If you buy clothes that your body at this day, no matter what the size is, feels good in now, you are so much more likely to feel good about your body now. When I have clothes that whatever size they are, feel like they fit me, feel like they flatter me, feel like they feel good and I feel comfortable in them, I feel so much better than trying to be in a smaller size or buying the smaller size because it's the goal or even having clothes that are too big and just make you feel like frumpy. It's so important that like you are being present with the fact of what your size is now and what you can do to love and nourish yourself now. And I think there's so much of the aspect of of my mental in relation to the weight gain that I've that I've had across the years to the body that I have now, like, and so much of it has to do with prayer and like being able to step into the person I am today from a spiritual level and being so proud of like how I show up in the world and knowing that like I'm showing up in this way and my body is in addition an expression to that. My body is part of that expression. So if I'm feeling so good and so clean about my intention, about my values, and I'm feeling so airtight um, when I think about my relationship to my spirit, it's like, but why would the body be different? Like, why would the body be different than, than this perfect thing? Because I feel like I'm treating myself so well. I feel like I'm loving myself so well. And I think something that I think about often was something that a healer told me. Her name's Laura Elliott. She's incredible. She's in Los Angeles. Was during a healing session when I was talking to her about feeling uncomfortable in my body. I was feeling just heavy and weighed down by my body, which if you're a spiritual being, you guys can can relate to that. You know, sometimes it feels like this body is a tight shoe, as Ram Dass says. You know, when you die, it's like taking off a tight shoe because then your soul can finally leave this heavy meat suit. But she was saying, during the healing session, she's like, you know, not every soul gets a body. Not every soul gets a body. And it was really profound for me because to think about the ways in which my soul wants to express in this world and the lessons that it learned, it wants to learn within this density on earth. There are souls all over that exist within our world today, within this density that want to express in the physical form and cannot. And that I am so lucky that I got lucky enough for my soul to be able to learn these lessons in the physical form because that is like the fastest way to ascension. That is the fastest way to spirituality. That is the fastest connection to God is to have this physical body allow me to just speed through all of these karmic lessons that it needs to ascend. So when I think we think about it just as like a basic front, like there are tons of souls that are just orbiting around earth right now that wish they could come down and express in physical form because that is the only way to ascend. It really, really helped me to shift my mindset around just being grateful for, you know, this, this body that I have no matter the form. I've had a lot of questions from you all about uh, what type of collagen I'm putting in my coffee. I've been sharing on my Instagram stories lately. I've been really loving making my coffee in the morning, slow mornings, hashtag, hashtag. Um, And I've been using the multi-collagen protein from Ancient Nutrition every damn time. It's so good. It mixes in perfectly with my coffee. You can also mix it into smoothies or juices, whatever you want. Um, They have an unflavored... They also have flavored, but I I love the unflavored for my coffee. This is nine grams of protein, zero carbs, zero fat, and it really supports a healthy gut. My digestion is on point. My skin is awesome. Skin, hair, nails, and joints. And what I love is that this, this features collagen types one, two, three, five, and 10. 
hello, that's unheard of. And it's from non-GMO, pasture-raised, cage-free and cruelty-free sources. Um, So beef, chicken, fish, and eggshell membranes. So they know how to do it right. They source just so well. Like Dr. Axe is obsessed with the quality of their products. Dr. Axe has been on our podcast. He is so smart and such a wealth of information. And their website is awesome too, ancientnutrition.com. They have uh, recipes and articles so you can learn more. Go to ancientnutrition.com and use the code ALMOST30 for 20% off first-time orders. That's ancientnutrition.com. Use the code ALMOST30 for 20% off first-time orders. It is so important that we support ourselves during this time with thoughtful self-care that feels good to us. And one of the ways I love to take care of myself is to create the most comfortable bed for me to sleep in eight plus hours. And so when I found Brooklinen, y'all, my life got so much better. I mean, you spend one third of your life in your sheets. So don't you want them to be insanely comfortable? We got to put comfort first. And listen, I don't even have to tell you, but Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews that you can read. Um, But they are having their biggest sale yet starting April 29th, the birthday sale. Get everything from bedding to towels to loungewear and more at savings that you honestly would not believe. I love their sheets. I got the Lux Hardcore Bundle and I am set. This includes one core set, so a flat sheet, fitted sheet, and two pillowcases, one duvet cover, and two extra pillowcases. Come on, y'all. You got to be prepared. Visit brooklinen.com and use the code ALMOST30 for 10% off your first order. Remember, sale kicks off April 29th. brooklinen.com. Use the code ALMOST30 for 10% off your first order. So with that, I'm going to take, I'm going to go for a few questions. I'm going to get off my, my G damn soapbox. Okay. So I actually posted in this, this secret Facebook group uh, that we have on Facebook. So this is where thousands of women connect. And I actually just posted this really recently about um, that I was doing this episode and there's so many questions and it just never ceases to give me pause that when I do talk about my body journey, how many women are struggling and how many women just like, ugh, why do we do this to ourselves? It just fucking kills me. Literally kills me. Why do we do this? Okay, here's one. Amanda says, how to get remotivated when you know what healthy for you feels like, but can't bring yourself to do the work you know needs to be done. I'm exhausted and frustrated with myself for the choices I'm making. Oh God same by trying to show love and compassion at the same time. Yeah. And I think this question makes me think about when you're frustrated with yourself for the choices you're making. When we're having those moments where we're binge eating, definitely been a binge eater. Holler like all my binge eaters. What's up? Um, I think it's those situations where you're mad at yourself for binge eating, mad at yourself for not eating perfect, mad at yourself for not working out perfect. And I think that for me... I've released because I've released much more so than ever before, but I still struggle with. And I just, I know you guys know this and I know you guys practice this. So I'm telling you something that you already know, but I think it's really, really, really worth noting and remembering. But when I catch myself having that spiral thought or story around something I ate that wasn't good for me, uh, me not working out, me weighing myself and and the weight number being something that makes me uncomfortable or something that makes me sad, not feeling comfortable in my clothes and having that frustrated feeling within myself. It's really that first noticing and first, first thought of like, okay, what's going on here? I'm, as an example, I'm mad at myself because I ate three desserts. Okay. And just thinking about how I can take energy away from that feeling of shame, of frustration, and of anger, if not for the solution that I want, which is to not do that again, but simply for the energy thought, if we think about us bringing more energy to that feeling and causing it to be something bigger than what it is. So when I think about Abraham Hicks, Abraham Hicks has a lot of work on YouTube about energy and actually weight and finding the perfect weight. But I do think about 
within anything. You know, I want to take energy away from things that I don't want to perpetuate more energy in my life for. And so in this example, if I'm finding myself feeling ashamed, feeling frustrated, feeling mad, it's not that I'm not feeling the feeling because that is definitely happening. But once the feeling is happening, I'm removing any any energy from that situation because that is in the past and I am now in the present and that's all I can focus on. So I think first, it's really the acknowledgement of the shame, of the guilt, of the of the whatever. And if you want to express that to someone you love and let them know, I've definitely done that many times. And they're really, really helpful for making me feel less alone. I think that's huge. You know, having people in your life that are those people that really understand about weight and body is huge. I have those people for me and they're everything, you know, to be like, oh my God, I ate a pint of ice cream and I feel so guilty. And they're like, oh my God, me too. And you're like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Thank God. You know, I'm not alone. Having that, expressing it, and then taking energy, any energy around it, because I don't want to perpetuate that energy in my life anymore. Maybe it's writing it down and burning it. Maybe it's, um, you know, doing a physical practice of like clearing, clearing breaths to remove that energy from your body. But it's really important that you notice it first when you're feeling frustrated and shame. So thank you so much for that, Amanda. Okay. Jenna says, how do you address your shadow regarding weight? I feel as if so many of us has grown up with parents who didn't or don't take care of themselves, constantly made comments about themselves or the family as a whole. And if you grew up around similar situations, how do you plan to break the cycle for your future children? So for me, within my family, I, t- I talked to you guys a little bit about that before, but for a little bit more background, my dad was always someone that was working out constantly, very, very working out all the time. He was never overweight. And would make comments about it, you know, just how it was important to be healthy. Whenever I would be sick or sad or frustrated or mad, he'd be like, you should go for a run. And I was like, okay, anyways, um, you'll never understand me. And my mom was someone that was always too fat, was always uncomfortable in her body, would always make comments about it, would always, you know, grab her sides or, or grab something. And she consistently let us know how unhappy she was in her body, how she always wanted to be less weight. And that was a huge priority for her in all areas of life. You know, she would say like terrible things about about situations and people that I won't share, but it was just a huge thing. So for me to figure out how to address the shadow around weight is focusing on me and focusing on those situations that I can think of growing up, you know, where the one time I was at breakfast and I poured myself a bowl of cereal into a salad bowl (laughs) because that's what you do. And my mom found me eating like an entire box of cereal in a salad bowl because that is fucking awesome and was horrified. And because I was already a chubby girl and I remember like feeling that energy of just, oh my God, I am horrifying that I eat this much that, you know, I'm causing pain by how much I'm eating. I shouldn't be eating this much no one else is eating this much. And just that imprinted memory of feeling other, of feeling shame or various other memories I've had in my life related to that. And really just working on those either in therapy, either with EMDR through my journal or through its you know subconscious reprogramming with the work from To Be Magnetic, uh, Lacey Phillips, or whatever methodology you want to work on when it is addressing your shadow that's what I do. For me, it's finding that memory and then it's working on it in um, in therapy. And that's doing inner child work, which is really helpful. But I think if we think now of like what I would do or what I would say to that little girl, that was me then. You know, if I saw her eating cereal from a salad bowl at a young age, like what would I say to her? Like, how would I, how would I, you know, help her nourish herself? How would I help her love herself? And you really, really, I think, firstly, with the shadow work, have to just identify the moments that really are impactful to you and focusing on you. It's not going to help you if you're focusing on, you know, how your, what your mom was doing, what your dad was doing, like what they do now, how they express themselves now, because, you know, that's really their journey and their path. And it's just kind of like details that are not going to really help you to heal you. So I love that question. I love a little shadow work. This is a question, how to cope with and be accepting of weight gain, (laughs) which makes me laugh because it's like, it's an amazing question. I really appreciate it, but it's like, it's kind of like weird for me to say, like, 
like people are asking for my advice on like my weight gain and like how do I accept it? It just makes me laugh. Makes me kind of cry and laugh at the same time. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm just like I'm like lying, dying laughing at that because I'm giving people advice on that. Okay. My thought is that. I make my mission and my intention in life so clear that whatever my body is doing or whatever the expression of my body is having right now is all a part of my overall expression in the world. And right now I am so focused on my spiritual path and connecting in and being more compassionate and being more value centric and really expressing myself, you know, in in all of the work that I've done, I've just uncovered so much of my shadow that I need to work on that. It's almost like that is my focus. And that doesn't mean that I'm masochistic, masochistic and I'm always focused on what needs to, to change about me. But through the nurture of my soul and my spirit, I've just been able to really have that be my focus and have, you know, my physical expression not be such a focus. I used to weigh myself. I I stopped for a long time. I'm weighing myself again because I'm actually trying to train myself that no matter what it says, I'm okay. And I think it's a really beautiful thing that people can have a healthy relationship with the scale. It's not for everyone. And I know it's a controversial topic. People are like, fuck the scale. Like, Definitely fuck the scale if it, it causes you mental anguish. But for me, it's actually been a practice to step on the scale to face that fear and face that like anxiety. And I think your weight gain is your own. You know, no one has to know. You guys don't have to do a podcast episode about gaining weight and like give people advice. <laughs> but you can just have that be your journey and your story. And like thinking about too, you know, how is that an expression of like how you're feeling mentally or emotionally? For me, um, I've been more stressed out than ever before. I've been more um, just focused on work than ever before. So I have this feeling that I haven't really taken care of myself in the way that I would normally if I wasn't, you know, an entrepreneur that was like fearful of of their job. But overall, I am deeply happy and satisfied and completely content with so much of my life. I'm eternally grateful that that is my focus and that the weight gain isn't my focus. And that, you know, if it is to go down, that's great. If it is to go up, that's great. And really, that's just like all a part of my path and journey. But I would definitely like focus on, you know, the the love of yourself outside of your body and outside of relationship to like what you look like, what size you are, how small you are, how you look in a bikini, and just focus on like, what about you as a human uniquely expressed in this world? Or what about you as a soul uniquely expressed in this world is special, unique, and and powerful? And then for me, I feel like the for me, you know, as part of my experience, the rest seem to follow. Because looks aren't everything, you know? I mean, I know it's hard, but like, you know. Okay, let's do one question, one more question of these. Okay, I like this one. Actually, I want to do two more. Hope that's okay. Okay, Amy asked, did you have a moment of clarity regarding diet culture and how it was affecting you mentally, spiritually, physically? Like a sudden awareness of a waking up moment. Cannot wait for this episode. Yes, I think I did. I'm trying to think of a specific diet culture moment. I mean, I was such a child of diet culture. Everything we had within my house was diet, food. Um, It was light, it had L-I-T-E on everything. It was carbs. There was no fat. It was like all fucking Splenda, Splenda light food. And I just literally, my whole freaking childhood was never nourished. I don't remember ever feeling full. I was like always like ravenous and eating cereal from salad bowls. And I do remember coming to Los Angeles and having the realization from the conversations with, you know, Kelly Levesque on the podcast, a nutritionist, and talking about the importance of fat, talking about the importance of greens and fiber, and realizing how wrong the way I had been approaching food was. So I think that was a really profound wake up for me. And through the podcast, you know, if you guys have been listening, we've had amazing experts on in health and wellness and understanding what is true about health and wellness and how it differs from the messaging within diet culture was so important. 
And, you know, if you guys, again, have been listening for a while, we started out really, really focused on health and wellness. And now we're much more varied and much more spiritual. So even going on that journey of realizing like, oh, it's not about me eating 1500 calories a day. It's not about me staying in a Weight Watchers point value of 22. It's not about the size of my pants. It's not about you know, whatever. It's really just about like the relationship that I have with source and like how expressed in my life I can be. It's really about this spiritual journey rather than like all this like silly frivolous stuff that we just like focus on to just take our attention from what really, really matters. So I think that was, but I would love to hear, you know, your guys' uh, moment of clarity as it relates to diet culture because I'm sure that would be super profound. I would love to hear about it. Okay, last one. Steph says, really looking forward to this episode. With the healthy weight gain, how did you adjust your mentality with how your clothes would fit? Looking in the mirror and seeing something that was once loose, which is now tight, is a difficult feeling. I completely agree. It's it's definitely very interesting when you're like, huh. I like right now with quarantine, I'm I've not put on jeans in months, and I'm very curious of what that will be like. But for me to, especially when we were on tour, you know, for years, when I would put on clothes and uh, they wouldn't fit at, like normal and they would just fit so differently. I just would kind of, <laughs> kind of just tell myself like, yeah, that was whack anyways. That, that skirt was not cute anyways. And although, you know, it definitely got me down, I would say more than half the time to try on clothes and have them not fit and have them feel uncomfortable and feel like it wasn't the same body that I thought I had. I would just use it as like, an excuse and like an opportunity for me to like find creative and unique ways to dress my new body. And I'm still working on it. You know, I'm I'm much curvier than I was before. The boobs, you know, have always been there, but it's just like I've got more everywhere. So now it's like, how can I creatively focus on my waist? How can I creatively focus on ways in which that I can like feel like I look good and I look comfortable? And that is like the journey of life. I mean, I bless the people that have been, you know, in the same type of body their whole lives, but it's kind of like fun. Like I'm exploring different types of cuts and different types of, you know, ways in which I can like feel really good. And I'm just trying to continue to see it as like an opportunity to like ride the wave and like really, really enjoy how I can express myself through what I'm wearing. And that's like, you know, hourglass stuff, V-neck, whatever. It's like, honestly... I, I'm really working on it. But I think overall, the the main message that I want to just end with, you know, for you guys in this, and I really appreciate you coming along this journey with me and being so kind and supportive and um, heartfelt and vulnerable with me when we're talking about this. I, I see you, like I deeply know you and I see you and I know how you feel. And you know, when I've talked to you guys on tour about this kind of stuff, it makes me so emotional and it makes me so grateful that I have this emotional capacity to to feel this way and to connect with people in this way. And, you know, for women, it's like, we think about this stuff so much. It's It's actually such a gift for all of us to have this as like an opportunity to really heal together. I found it really profound to heal my body conversation with you guys and to share with you guys. And it's allowed me to be a deeper, more mindful, more connected, more grounded, more humble person than if I didn't have it. And, you know, the learnings that I've been provided through this body journey of all the darkness and all the shame and all the other and all the embarrassment and all the, you know, difficult times has just really, really given me this beautiful capacity to like feel into the collective pain and shame of what we're going through. And I just feel like we can all move through this, you know, as long as we like focus on what's really good. So I love you. You are the best. I am so deeply grateful to be a part of your journey. And I'm hopeful this was helpful for you, if not to make you feel less alone, but to, you know, make you laugh or inspire you in some way. Uh, just DM me. It's it's Krista on Instagram. And I'm happy to talk to you if you have any specific questions, if you want to go through anything, if you want any advice, 
whatever you guys need, I'm here for you. I'm hopeful that this provided just a little bit of information and you know gave you pause on what you can do um, to be more connected to yourself because that is really the goal. And just know that life is always the ebbs and flows. It's never perfect. It's never completely there. The diet is never 100. The, the working out is never 100. It's always up and down. And that's what's beautiful. So I love you. I love your body. It's so smoking hot. You're so amazing. And I will see you on the next one. Bye. Amazing. (laughs) Profound. So great. (laughs) Connect with me on Instagram at it's Krista. Happy to chat through things with you. My DMs are open. I know it's a hard one. So I'm open and available for you. Thank you all so much for listening. And it really means so much to us when you leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Yes, thank you. Truly. So if you subscribe and review, we read them all. It helps us do what we do. I love this one from Gigi's Forever. Love with a uh, love. Five stars. I love this podcast and I've been listening for over a year now. I so appreciate everything KNL do for us and themselves to help this brand grow and so that they themselves continue to transform. Love you. Oh, thank you, sweet one. So yeah. sweet. When you guys um, write a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, it just means a lot to us. So thank you so much for doing that. And we will see you at one of the workshops for the new Paradigm digital series that are happening all across the next couple months on Saturdays. All of them include tons of free bonus content. So you get more than your um, money's worth Uh, from the ticket or you get more value Mm -hmm. than the ticket price. And we're also making donations to local charities in response to COVID. Um, So we are really looking forward to that. And then Inner Peace Shop, almost 30 for Inner Peace. We're excited to bring that to you to help you cultivate inner peace in your life. And just a reminder that we're here for you during this time. We know it could be so up and down and all over the place, but we hope that Almost 30 is really that place that you can feel like you can, can... you can express and just be yourself and find community. So we'll see you in the secret Facebook group. Have a great day. Love you guys. Love you. Bye.